presents In an Instant. The day before Thanksgiving 2014, the weather, it was a lot of snow. The kids want to go outside playing the snow. Hey, you boys be careful. The area we live at, it's a good area. It's the other areas of Newburgh that I'm worried about. Newburgh is a tough little city. It's the highest violent crime rate per capita in the state. I can't find my son. It's a feeling I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Papito! JJ! I just wanted to find the boys. JJ! Papito! You can't even put yourself in these parents' place because you do anything to find your kid. I was ready to be like, do Roblox. I don't want a helicopter out, everything. Papito! They're gonna find us dead, lifeless. I need all units right now at the Family Health Center. You gotta be strong for those boys! You don't know if you're gonna see your child alive, dead. If I'm ever even gonna see him again. JJ! Where are you going? My name is Auli Martinez. My parents came here from Puerto Rico. We've been here all our lives in Newburgh, New York. I think we should be like the sixth borough in New York City. My family is extremely close. I have two brothers, Ruben Martinez, and my older brother, Josh Martinez. We all live about five minutes away from each other. So we see each other every day. My mom and my dad has always raised us to where all you have is your brothers. All you have is your family, nobody else. If you need somebody, that's what they're there for. My son is Jason Rivera. We call him JJ. My mom, she's a really good parent. I love her. I think she does really good with me. She's like a little bit of a jokester, but not much. My nephew, his name is Elijah Martinez, but we call him Papito. When I'm over at JJ's house, the boss is my aunt, because he tells us, like, we got to tell her where we're going and what time we're going to be back. Papito and JJ are very tight. They should have been brothers. That's how tight they are. They fight like brothers. <laughs> they love each other like brothers. There doesn't go a day where they don't call each other. They're constantly together, them two, constantly. Deidre is my brother's girlfriend, Papito's mom. Papito and his father, Ruben, live with me. We all live together across town. He goes to the counties practically every day because where I live, there's no kids. The neighborhood I live in is more quieter. There's not a lot to do. And with, where JJ lives, there's mad kids here. The Kennys, I think, is a good complex because it's not much of, like, gangs or bad people or anything like that. I like it. The day before Thanksgiving, it was 2014. The weather, it was a lot of snow, and it was cold, real cold. You guys coming out to play or what? I don't know. I mean, JJ's upstairs eating his dinner and... Come on! Okay, okay, I'll ask. It was the day before Thanksgiving. I was excited for the turkey. That's my favorite part, the mac and cheese and the rice. But it took forever, so we started throwing, throwing um, snowballs at the window. I was like, no, man, I'm cold. I'm staying inside. They're like, no, no, no. I was like, you know, let's just have a little fun. The grown-ups, we were all inside prepping the food, watching TV, watching the football game. It started snowing outside, and the kids want to go outside playing the snow. Through the whole day, they're just in and out, in and out. Kids knocking on the door, hey, Papito and JJ, can y'all guys come out? We're going to play football. We're going to play this. All right, no problem. They go change clothes, go back outside. But the whole day, they were just having fun. And we was inside prepping food. 
and, you know, just enjoying ourselves as a family. Oh, yeah. mm. well, what are you doing to help? Don't get out of here. <laughs> What's going on, mommy? Oh, it's good. Está bueno. No, My dad was seasoning. He seasoned all the meat, everything for the next day to get ready to cook. My mom, she can't stay out of it. She want to put her two cents. No, no, you need a little bit more of that. You need a little bit more of this. But, you know, mom's cooking. She knows what you're talking about. You got a roast pork in the oven, a turkey in the oven. You got cakes everywhere. You got pies, devil eggs, rice and beans, all that good stuff. Mom, Mom, Kathy's bugging me to go back out there and play some more. JJ, you've been outside playing all day. I already put yours and Papito's wet clothes in the dryer. No. But it's Thanksgiving. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Please. Titi, can JJ go outside and play again, please? Please. My dad said it was okay if you said it was okay. Please, 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 please. All right, but curfew is coming up soon, JJ. So you boys don't be late, okay? Okay. okay. All right, have fun. They're so excited. There was some negotiating. I'm like, you just got home. You've been wet all day. You've been playing in the snow all day. Like, give it a break. We haven't had snow in a while, so they were dying to play in the snow. Between both of them, they ganged up on me. And I was like, okay, fine. Hey, hey, you boys be careful. Enjoy the snow. I just felt like it was a real Thanksgiving. Like this is a New York Thanksgiving, you know? Your friends and family at the house preparing for the dinner the next day. The kids playing outside in the snow. I was like, that's what it's about. It's about an hour north of New York City, right along the Hudson River. Just like any city, it's, it's very dense. You have people on top of people, and there are hard times right now. People are struggling, and that leads to crime. There was a while where we were on the top 10 for crime, not just New York State, but the country. I've been in Newburgh since I was two. And me and my brothers, it wasn't like this when we were growing up. Um, it has totally changed. Newburgh, the residents, a lot of them have no respect for the police. We have kids killing kids in broad daylight. It's just, it's gotten real, real, real bad, especially the murder rate, the murder crime. It's gotten real bad, Newburgh. I remember just one week, like seven people got killed in one week. It's like one a day. Like, every summer, I always say, okay, I hope nobody I know gets hurt, because every summer, somebody I know dies. The area we live at, it's a good area. It's an apartment complex. It's called the Kenny Courts. I lived there since I was 12 years old. So my son grew up there. Everybody knows us. So it's a lot easier when the neighborhood knows everybody. It's the other areas of Newburgh that I'm worried about. where they were playing, it was an open parking lot. It's literally right across the street. My son is very good about curfew. He knows I'm very strict when it comes to curfew. You see the time, Ruben? Ruben? Yeah? Those boys are late. I got so busy cooking in here, I lost track. Yeah, but I figured, you know, it hasn't snowed in a while. Just let them play a little longer. It's Thanksgiving. Tomorrow, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Get your butt off the sofa and go yell for them to get their freezing butts in here. Okay. 
Thank you. I try not to get too worried because my son is very good about coming home on time, letting me know where he's at. So when 8.30 came around, I was a little nervous, but not too nervous yet to the point I thought, oh my God, something's wrong. Papito! JJ! Come on! It's past curfew! Papito, JJ! Papito! JJ! Papito, JJ, it's past curfew! Come on, it's cold out here! JJ! Who boy is that? Papito! JJ! Papito! Where are they? I looked everywhere. They ain't answering. Get... Ali! Ali, you better bundle up. It's cold out there. I went to see Kathy, which was their friend that they were playing with. Uh, JJ and Papito are here? No. Well, what's going on? Our boys haven't made it home yet. Can I talk to Kathy for a minute? Yeah, sure. Uh, Kathy! Oh. Yeah? Hi, Kathy. Where are them boys at? You guys were playing together, right? Yeah, for a while. But I left early. Because I had to go to the bathroom. They didn't say they were going somewhere else? We don't know a friend's house. I don't know. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Okay. Papito! JJ! Papito! Maybe they just out playing video games or something, you know? Probably lost track of time. This is boys being boys. Papito! Ali was worried more than me at the beginning. So I'm like, don't worry, they're probably in somebody's house playing PlayStation or an Xbox or something. Me and my brother, we had a few differences, because like I said, me as a parent, I was already losing my mind because I know my son. I know JJ comes home by 8, and if he doesn't, he always lets me know. But Ruben was still thinking they're OK. You know, they're probably just somewhere. They'll come back. You have, man. Papi! We just called, called, screaming, screaming. They didn't hear nothing. So we started knocking around the Kennys. Hi, um, our sons, Papito and JJ, are missing. We can't find them. Can you help us search? Cheers, man. As far as knocking on doors, Thank you guys. I don't remember how many, but I remember I was just screaming. They didn't answer. I was just banging on the next one. People are coming out to help. Like, you need some help? Yeah, sure, please. Just look anywhere. Anywhere that you think you could go. Any friend's house, please just check. It was heartwarming when more people kept helping. It just, my heart skipping beats. I just, I was nervous. I was out, out of my line. I didn't know what was going on, what the hell to do. But I was just, I was out. I just wanted to find the boys. I 
I figured I was gonna find him. I figured it was just somebody I was playing a game. I was gonna find him. I just wanted to find the boys. That was my main thing, just find the boys. I just want to think, like, okay, JJ's being hard-headed. You know, he's not listening to me today. Or he forgot to call me. Or, you know, they're just being boys. That was what I was hoping. Obito! JJ! Where are they? Lord, I'm starting to get scared. <laughs> JJ would have called by now. I would have been home by now. When mine is racing, I keep thinking about that little boy they found. Hey, in no, 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 <laughs> Hey, don't think that, all right? We just gotta keep looking for him. <laughs> There's so many stories out there where kids I haven't found like months later, and they find their bones. Newberg had the case about the little five-year-old that got killed. He was reported missing at first, but then they found his body after a big snowstorm in a suitcase. So that was my biggest fear. Mark Buckle had been missing, uh, I would say, at least two months before we located his body. You had this horrible, horrible thing happen in your home, your home city. And now your kids are missing. Of course you're going to think back to that. I was like, you know, we're we're gonna have to wait until all the snow melts and then they'll find them. So it, it was hard. <laughs> all, right. all right, but we should really okay. be starting to call the cops. No, no, I'm not ready to call the cops. I'm not ready for that yet. Like you said, we just, we gotta keep looking for them. I don't, but, but you gotta call Deidre. She's gotta know what's going on with Bobito. I know, I, I don't know, I just, Come on, let's, let's keep looking for him. JJ! Papito! It's already getting to about 10 o'clock. I told my sister, you gotta call the police. And I was scared to call my girl. I didn't want to tell her that. And plus, she, uh, she I just didn't want to call her to tell her that. Bobby Doe and his father, Ruben, live with me. We all live together across town. I worked two jobs that day. And when I got home, I figured that I wasn't going to bother him until I come home, you know, it's a holiday. I figured, you know, just let them be, took a shower, and started cooking for Thanksgiving. And it's funny because I kept looking at the time, too, and I'm like, they should be in the door any minute, you know? Ruben, where you at? Deidre. Ali's on the way there. What? What are you, what are you talking about? I, I can't find the people. What do you mean you can't find him? Ali's on the way there. <laughs> OK, OK. Ruben doesn't cry. He's not, you know, he, he, don't, he doesn't cry. When he called me, I heard his voice was, you know, kind of muffled and stuff, and, um, and I was like, what happened? And he was like, my sister's on her way to come get you. I can't find Papito. I said, what do you mean you can't find Papito? And I said, and your sister's coming to get me. And I know that's the problem, because I don't get along with his sister. So for her to come get me, I know it was serious. I heard it in his voice. He did not want to tell me. He did not want to even call me. Uh, it was the worst. Uh, I don't know how to tell you, but it was the worst. I just wanted to keep looking for him, and plus, I didn't want to see DJ till she got over here. I'd rather let her and my sister talk on the way so she could be more a little bit calm, but I guess it didn't work either. I picked her up as a little after 11. She got in the car, you know. Of course, she was upset, mad, like, what the hell's going on? 
We've been looking for two hours. We can't find them anywhere. I could have been helping you look. Why am I the last person to find out about this? Ruben didn't want to tell you. He wanted to try to find the kids first. And now I know why he sent you to get me instead of coming to get me himself. I didn't understand what the hell was going on because she was crying, telling me she couldn't find him, and I just wanted to get there, like, just step on the gas and let's go. I got there, I'm like, what the hell's going on? Why am I just getting called now? I have half the neighborhood looking for my son and I'm home cooking. I didn't, you know, like, uh, yeah, I was pissed. This is crazy, Ali. We gotta call the police. As parents, we felt like if we call the cops, this would all be real. You know, like our sons are in trouble. So us as parents, that's how I was feeling at that time. Like, I don't wanna call the cops. Usually when people call police, uh, it's not for a good thing. Uh, usually it's one of the worst days of their life, you know? You don't need police to come party with you, you know? <laughs> Something has gone wrong when you call the police. We have to call the cops. Me, as a parent, I didn't want to. Because to me, that would be real. That I might not ever see my son, I might not ever see my nephew. So it was hard as a parent to actually pick up that phone, call the cops, like, I can't find my son. 911, what's your emergency? My son and his cousin are missing. They've been missing for two hours. Wherever they are, they need help. There's not so many ways that you can get in and out of Newburgh. I was ready to be like, block the road, do roadblocks, like search people cars in and out of Newburgh. I was not playing. Like, I want a helicopter out, everything. I was really ready to, like, kick down people's doors. Everybody, like, if you weren't opening your door, I was kicking the door in. I was not playing. Hi. Uh, have you seen the two boys that are missing? Um, the names are JJ and Pepito, 9 and 11, about this tall. And uh, they're playing in the snow, so they're wearing their snow gear. Have you seen them around? They've been missing for a couple hours. If you can keep an eye out. The boys, they're fighters. And I know them, they wouldn't just let anybody take them away. They wouldn't, they would fight back as much as they could. I felt helpless because there was nothing I could do to find them. I'm like, I know they're out there, but what can I do? I just broke down crying. And that's when it really hits you to where you don't know if you're gonna see your child alive, dead, if I'm ever even gonna see him again. This and stuff, but I ain't say that to JJ because I didn't want to scare him like that. I was thinking that they're gonna find us dead, not alive, lifeless. I thought they're not gonna, like, we're not gonna live. Like, a couple times I thought that, but I didn't want to say it out loud because I already had told Bobito, we're gonna make it, we're gonna live. So I was just saying it in my head so he wouldn't hear me. Newburgh is a tough little city. It's 3.8 square miles, roughly, and it's tough. It used to be an industrial city, 
and that all went away. The job market there is minimal. Uber's biggest problem is no jobs. McDonald's, Burger, Burger King here and there, but there's not, there's nothing there. It's nothing for the kids either. It is dangerous. When it gets dark out there, they just, it goes crazy. People outside drinking and then they start gun shooting here. It's all. I think it has uh, no, no work for the kids, no work for the people. It's the highest violent crime rate per capita in the state. You have a better chance of being a victim of a violent crime there than probably anywhere else. We were all in roll call when the call came through. Seven arriving on scene. It was called in by Deirdre Kirk and that there was two missing boys, one nine, one eleven. There was about six officers at the time for the shift. Uh, two of the officers were specifically tasked with finding the parents. The first thing you want to do is, is start interviewing the parents. So you see they're not here. I already told you they're not here. Are there any friends' houses that they might be at or any areas in the neighborhood they like to play in? I already told you we searched the whole neighborhood. Papito's mom and dad are right now banging on every door in Newburgh like you guys should be doing instead of checking closets in my house. <laughs> <laughs> when the police arrived, it was a bunch of questions. You know, where'd you see them last? What were they wearing? What did they do today? Who were they with? Um, are they known, to, you know, to run away? You know, do they do this often? Is this rare? We've had several times where the kids come home, the parent, they don't even see them walk in the house. Just about a month ago we had this. Parent was freaking out. Kid actually came home, was upstairs, went to sleep under the bed. There we go. No more missing kid. They were trying to calm us down. You know, everything's going to be OK. I think that's the worst thing you could tell a parent, because I'm like, it's not OK. If it was OK, my son would be here. Like, what are you talking about? You can't even put yourself in these parents' place, because, man, if you were in that spot, well, you'd do anything to find your kids. that night was pretty bad. We had quite a snowstorm. We had snow piled up everywhere. I would hate to think of my child out in that weather, not knowing where he was. My sergeant had requested that I respond to a young lady's residence. Her name was Kathy. She was the last person known to have seen them. Good evening, sir. Let me guess. You want to talk to Kathy? I'll wake her up. My name is Officer Melanie Mann. Can you tell me about everything you were doing with JJ and Pepito tonight? Can you show me where you guys were playing? I told her, you know, JJ and Pepito, they haven't come home. I don't even think she threw a jacket on. I think she just put some sandals on and she was out the door and in my car. She basically told me that they had been out playing in the snow, building a snow fort, and she had to go in. And that was the last time she saw them. She told me the area where the snow fort was. And I said, well, can you show me? That's where we were. This is where you were playing? Mm -hmm. 
She pointed to it. She's like, that right there, that's the fort we were playing in, and that's where she had left them. Auli and Deidre said this was not common for the boys at all. Now we kind of have check boxes. They always make their curfew. They weren't at their house. So we try and talk to both moms, find out what friends they hang out with, what friends maybe you don't like if they hang out with, but they kind of still do. And we go from there. And as we get lower on that list, you kind of run out of options. And then you start to throw up some panic flags. My job was kind of canvassing the area, perimeter around the Kennys and the Mold apartments where they were last seen. We'd ask, you know, people standing outside, hey, you see two young boys walking around, this is what they look like. It was cold, it was windy, we had a little bit of that, uh, you know, snowy rain too, so it was that thick, compact snow. We're soaking wet, our boots are wet, our socks are wet, it's cold, we're freezing cold. Um, so it's, it's a difficult environment as well to search in. Checking all the bars, checking the parks, checking the lakes. Within a block or two is a, a small little body of water um, by the Lake Street Apartments. It was just one of the thoughts, because they it's one of their favorite spots is that lake. Whether it's snow or not, you know, maybe they just wanted to see what it looked like in the snow. I don't know. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, they slipped into the lake. You know, like, I was thinking maybe one of them slipped into the lake and the other one was helping, another one slipped in. Like, I don't know. The surface of the lake w wasn't iced over. This was kind of like a... Uh, you know, a freak storm. It re we didn't have any snow before this. After this, we didn't have snow again for a while. The uh, lake, it was actually easy to check. This is where the snow did assist us a little bit because lakes, parks, things like that, there was no footprints going towards it. We knew the kids, they haven't been there. So that's good, but we still don't know where they are, so that's not good. You want to find them, but you don't want to find them in a lake. Papito! 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 Yeah, that's your jam, yeah. We gotta stay awake. Okay. Yeah. If we want to stay alive, we gotta stay awake, all right? Get out of here, puppy. But it wasn't really real to me. That's all I kept thinking. It's a feeling I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Just not knowing where your child is for that time, not knowing if he's alive, not knowing if he's dead, not knowing somebody took him. I'd never, ever want to go through that feeling again. Papito! Papito! I have a call that I call him, and he, he'll do it back. It's like a loud piercing noise. It's like, instead of a whistle, you could hear it like a mile away. It's a really, really loud noise. Papito knows my sound, so he'll do it back, and I can hear where it's coming from. No! Come on, Papito! Where are you? I kept doing that call, and I didn't hear nothing. I kept making that noise, and my throat was done. I couldn't, I couldn't do it no more. So you had about six, seven officers in total. And as this progressed, we kind of realized this is a little more serious. Uh, we start using more and more manpower. We 
kind of had our ace in the hole. This is where we, we called for Officer Kurt Hain. He has a specialty. His specialty is he has a bloodhound. I get off at midnight, and I didn't get the phone call till I mean, it was almost 1, I think. I was about halfway home driving down Interstate 84. The roads were pretty horrible. And it was cold. My cell phone started ringing. And when I looked down at it, it said City of Newburgh Police Department. And when they're calling at that hour, it's usually they need the dog. Want to know if I could turn around and come back. Yeah, absolutely. My dog's name is Tank Tebow. He's an eight-year-old bloodhound. He was donated to uh, the city of Newburgh by a gentleman out of Massachusetts. The guy that donated him had, uh, must have been a pretty big fan of Tim Tebow, the football player. Tried to change his name, but it didn't, it didn't work. As long as we're driving, people know we're coming because he howls for eight hours, nonstop. When the officer came in with the dog, they specifically asked for something that JJ constantly has or carries around with him. It has to be something where it's always with him. <sighs> and I remember seeing his frog. My younger daughter, who's his sister, Isabella, gave it to him. I was like, you know, this is from me to you. I love you. Always keep it. And he literally slept with it. Tank. Here we go, Tank. Here we go. Here we go, boy. Going downstairs and giving it to him, it was like, okay, here, you know, find him. Like, now you have something, now you can find him. That was my hope. There you go, Tank. Get a good whiff. Get a good whiff, Tank. When I introduced the scent, we went southbound on Walsh and down to the Family Health Center. And there was this large snowbank. Let's go, Tank. There were two police cars parked right next to the snowbank. Okay. Come on, Tank. Back to work. Let's go. Let's go, Tank. Come on. Back to work. When he sees the police cars, he gets kind of excited a little bit. Back to work. Told him to get back to work. I know it now that I made a mistake. The boys were in the snowbank that we walked past. Help! Help! We're in the snow Help! pile! Help! Help! Freezing my butt off. Still can't move. Me too. 
I don't know wish we didn't come out here and play with Kathy. Yeah. Me too. the day before Thanksgiving. I was outside playing with my friends, right behind my house. I got cold because I had mad snow in my gloves and my hat. So I was like, I'm going inside for a little bit. I went to go inside and I went to eat. I got some ravioli and a little bit of snacks. Well, he said he was gonna come outside, but it took forever, so we started throwing, throwing um, snowballs at the window. What are you doing? Come on, dude. Hey, hey you boys be careful. Enjoy the snow. I should have never came outside. If I wouldn't have came outside, none of this would have happened. It took us a while to climb up because we kept sinking our legs. As soon as we got to the top, we just sat there. We were like, I think, like seven feet in the air. Come on. How big? I don't know. Sorry. Let's go. You hear me? Oh. Me and JJ were working on it. We had two shovels. There was a hole, like, just like that big. It was in it, it was like a big little thing, like a little tiny igloo. We finished, Jaquan and Kevin, they were cold, they went home. Hey, come back. We finally got it big enough to go inside. Everyone's ditching us. Kathy, you too. I know, but I have to go to the bathroom. Really bad. <laughs> then you better run. The fort don't got a bathroom. Let's go. Come on. We need to finish this before she gets back. Kathy was gonna come back and we were gonna just like go by my house. But my was like, come on, we just built this for us, let's go in it. Yeah. Right clear path. I'm getting kinda cold. Come on, we at least have to go inside and try it out. I guess. Okay, you first. What? Come on. Hey, it's pretty big in here, right?
Laughing at first, cause we thought like, oh, we can get out. It's, it's just a little bit of snow. And then it came back again. They kept on more snow. and it was pitch black. Help! Help! Until, if you look up a little bit, you saw like a little white spot you could see up in the sky. Like a hole like this big. I can't move, Papito. I'm stuck. I can't move my legs. He, he, he was like, neither can I. I was like, um, all right, let's just use our hands. I, I, I didn't have any gloves on, so when I punched the snow, it would hurt my fist, because the snow was really hard, and it was, like, icy. I was a little bit confident, because, like, at first I was like, oh, we could just dig out this. It's probably ice. It won't fall. And then I was thinking about it, like, if I move the wrong way, it might fall on my face, and I might, I could die. So that's why I was like, I, I wasn't going to move. I was just moving my legs, just my legs. Well, I was trying to at least, but I couldn't. Kathy's coming back. She'll see what happens, and she'll dig us out. Yeah, I was like, this is a way for Kathy. She, the, snubbles, the shovel's right outside. She should dig us out. But we just said, wait, how is she going to see us? I was like, um, we can just yell. She'll hear us. Help! 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 We're in the snow pile. 20 minutes later, she didn't come. I was like, where's Kathy? It doesn't take this long for her to use the bathroom. But it was like, she's not coming back. Let's go, thank you. I was behind the snow pile. Officer Hain and his K-9 tank began their search for JJ and Pepito. Let's go. Hey, go, tank. Back to work. Come on. I did see Tank pause for a moment, and he actually came by the snow pile. But then he continued. If I could go back, he was probably telling me it was somewhere over there, but I didn't listen. When he sees the police cars, he gets kind of excited a little bit. So he wanted to go towards the cars, and I kept pulling him back, thinking the cars are the problem, and pulled him off, told him to get back to work. We started screaming and screaming. Our throat started hurting. On my chest, it was a lot of snow, but my head and my arms are fine. And it was like a little hole right here where I could like move my hand to touch Papito. So I went like this, trapping my arm through. I was like, all right, let me just touch him, make sure he's still okay. He's like, oh, my hands are freezing. I remember him putting my hand, his hand in my face mask. The snow that we were under was heavy, wet, and nasty. It felt like snow was just closing in on us, getting tighter, tighter, until it would just crush us. Whoa! 
Everything was on me, so I, I, I took the blame because it was my fault. We knew they were together because they don't leave each other's side when they come home. We knew they were together. It's crazy because two of them missing instead of just one, it's, it's heartbreaking. You can't lose one and you can't lose another, two of them. It's, it's unbearable, I guess. Please, God. Just bring him back home, please. I don't know what I did, but I'm sorry, please. Bring him back, please. Papito! JJ! Papito! Please! JJ! We have friends. We got family. We got the entire Kennys looking for these boys. Nobody has found them. <laughs> I kept telling my brother, like, it has to be somewhere where they're hurt or they can't get out, or because I know they would. And, and the one thing, they would never leave each other. If JJ was hurt, Papito would stay there. If Papito was hurt, JJ would stay there. I said, I'm not coming home without him. Come on, Papito! Where are you? And I just wanted to see his face. I just wanted to see my baby's face. We're stuck here. Shut up. Don't say that, all right? My mom's going to find us. She's not coming back. No one's coming back. No one can hear us. Not once did we think our kids were buried there. We just called, called, screaming, screaming. They didn't hear nothing. We heard them, but because there was so much snow on us, they didn't hear us. Hey! I heard my mom and them walking up and down that street just all day just yelling, JJ, Papito, screaming for us. Help! Help! Mom! Dad! I yelled my loudest. My mom didn't hear me. And that's, that's crazy, because that sound goes really far. After a while, it started getting, it was getting harder, harder to breathe. I remember praying. I was asking God to, we can get found. I was thinking that when the snow melted, they're going to find us dead, not alive. I was crying my eyes out. He was crying. 
It just felt like it's the end of the world. This is it. My sister and Deidre, they went with the dog. Wherever the dog went, they was gone. Where the dog was going, it took me all around, like, a major street, and then by, like, the bars. We started down toward William Street, and I'm looking like, what? Why would the kids be up here? William Street is densely populated, and there's a lot of crime. As a mother, I wouldn't want my child hanging out there at any time, let alone nighttime. Taking us. Boys didn't come down here. I know it. No, this don't feel right. <laughs> Finally, we see the dog stop at this abandoned building. A lot of crackheads use it, prostitution. You, as a parent, are like, no. This cannot be, and I told her, somebody grabbed them and brought them down here. That's the only way they would be over here. And I remember getting frustrated, because I kept telling Deidre, they're not down here. Like, this dog is wasting his time. They're not down here. I was like, please, just take me back home, because I felt hopeless. It's getting cold out here. We're wasting time. This dog is, he's not smelling nothing. There's no one in my gut. They're back at the Kennys. Let's go to the Kennys. All right, let's go. I started getting upset because I knew my son would not come all the way down here. Unless somebody dragged my son over here, that's the only way my son would be over here. As the hours went by, it got colder. My biggest fear was they're going to freeze to death. Like, it's so cold, and that was my biggest fear. The whole time, just... I kept praying in my head, God, please, just bring my son and my nephew back. I need my son and my nephew. Just the whole night, kept praying to myself, please bring, my, please bring the kids back. We wasn't talking the whole time. We would talk. But after it, if it was quiet for like a while, he would say my name and stuff just to make sure I'm all right. Papito? Papito? Yeah. You all right? Yeah, but I'm cold and I gotta pee. I remember seeing something on Animal Planet about the snow. And I was like, wait, I was just peeing myself. It's warm, right? Because I remember in the water when we were little, we used to always pee and the water would turn warm. We should pee our pants. What? Oh, I'm serious. It will warm us up. OK. We got warm for like, I think, like a minute, and then it'll get colder. There was like a little hole on the top. When I looked out the hole, all I saw was like the sky and two stars maybe. I knew it's like right there and I can't get to it. I doubted myself and my mom a couple times. I don't know why I did. I think it was because I was a little young and I didn't really like know like what was happening. They called the cops. I didn't know that they did that. I loaded Tank into my truck, started the truck just to warm him up a little bit, gave him some water. We were going to go at it again. I'd go at it all night long. He had icicles hanging off of the hair on his back of his legs because he'd go through the puddles. And it's how cold it was. It was just freezing on him. It wasn't going to stop. Four 
107 copies. I'm on it. It was just Thanksgiving night, snowing and cold, and here we are at her front door. Kathy, Kathy, you know, where are they? Come on, Kathy, just tell me. And we're, we're kind of playing that game. And she was very candid, like, wanted to help. Like, I really don't know. And I believed her. She she wasn't covering for them. She really didn't know where they were. All units, this is 107. Nothing here. 105. Want to walk around with me on that snow pile again? I want to take another look. Sergeant Rolla asked me, you know, do you know where the snow pile is that she is telling us about? And I said, yes, you know, she showed me where it was. So he's like, um, do you want to go over there and just check the area again. Yeah, of course, you know, let's go. I called it off over the radio so other officers knew where I was going. They start heading that way to help me out. Hey. Hey. Still nothing? No, nothing. I feel like we're missing something. We know they were here. Yeah. You do see some footprints coming from the Kenny apartments towards the pile. Kind of looks like kids were playing there earlier. You know, there's a lot more footprints. All these were hours old. They were almost filled back up with snow. immediately we know we've been looking for the kids two hours us you know the parents have been looking another two plus hours and we know the weather oh. 107 106 I need all units right now at the family health center parking lot it just went to the pit of my stomach like oh uh, this is not gonna turn out well. And I just started digging with my hands because that was all that was there to dig with. It moved. The boot moved. I felt something on my foot and then he hit it. And then that's when I heard, oh, we found him. JJ, JJ. Yeah. Something hit my boot. You hear that? There's people out there digging. Help! <laughs> they found us. Help! I knew we were going to live. It Help! felt like instant relief. Like, yes, we're going to live. I told you we're going to live. I was so happy. I started crying. I think he started crying. Help! Listen, sir. What was that? Listen, sir. That's my son! Oh, wait, what do you mean? I just heard EMTs to Family Health Center. 
I just ran. I just started running. He was like, whoa, whoa, you can't. What you mean I can't? That's my son and my nephew. Boots, T-shirt, nothing. Just ran down there. He grabs me, and it kind of got me nervous because I thought he was going to tell me, you know, they're dead. And that was what was going through my head. Like, I'm looking at him like, please don't tell me this. She's like, JJ, Bobby, she's crying. She don't know what's going on. I just caught on my hands and knees, barehanded, snow, taking the snow out, taking the snow out, taking the snow out. I couldn't believe that they were in the snow because I passed that snowbank so many times. All I wanted to do was see him. Like, I just want to see them, please, God. And I was like, please let them be alive. Please let them be alive. And I heard a transmission that sounded like they found them. I then got into my truck and drove down that way. When I was pulling up, I could see people digging at this snow mound that I walked past, and I wanted to throw up because I walked right past them. And the only thing I could think of was they've been in there for hours, and it's probably not going to be good. That guilt is going to be there for a long time. I saw we have one shovel. <laughs> I'm, I'm here digging. Other people are like clawing at it. I'm like, this is not going to work. Oh! It's going to take forever. We got to go get shovels. We had the one shovel I had. That's it. Picture that parking lot, compacted, snow plow, pushed and piled high snow, thick, heavy, dense snow. So we're trying to dig now this. You, you can't just dig them out. Officers are running into the middle of the street, stopping plows. It was just more and more people just kept showing up and started digging. The adrenaline just took over, and it was just keep digging. I've never had any feeling like that, ever. Help! Help! I thought we were going to be out just like that, like easily, um, but it took a while. And then it got kind of dicey because they were digging at the first child. They weren't sure where the second one was. Oh, oh. You're crushing me! Stop! Help! Stop it! I was like, no, you're throwing a snow on him. He's right next to me. And that you're hurting him. I was like telling him, freaking out, like stop doing that. I couldn't see anybody, but he was like directioning them to stop and do it right. just punched through and then and he just grabbed me and pulled me up. He told me to walk, but I told him I couldn't. I couldn't feel my body. And he carried me to the ambulance. I just said, uh, you okay? Yeah, we're okay, Dad, we're okay. I was JJ. We're all right, Dad, we're all right. I thought, dang, I forgot me. Hey, I'm still here. Don't leave me! I'm still in here! Help! Come get me out, I'm still cold. Finally, I felt the snow starting to feel lighter and lighter and lighter. I was like, yes, thank God.
The first thing my son does is reach out and says, Mommy. Me as a mom, I'm reaching down there grabbing him. JJ, oh my God, baby. <laughs> no, 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 don't move it. We need to get him stabilized in case he's hurt, okay? It's okay. It's gonna be okay. It's okay, buddy. It's okay, buddy. Go ahead, get him out. Stay calm. Here you go, man. Come here. Let me get him out. They up cops stopped me because they weren't sure if he was injured. And by me grabbing him, I could have injured him more. I remember just holding my son in the ambulance, like, thank God. Because we literally went by that mound, wow, over a dozen times, and screaming, screaming, Papito, JJ. us at 2 o'clock, I guess. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, like 8 hours. It was a miracle. It was an honest to God miracle. I was crying. Sergeant Rollo was standing there, and I, I remember telling him, you know, thank God for you. Because had he not suggested going back to the snow pile, just to check again, who knows what would have happened. I grabbed the shovel and I just started digging. By no means did I think I was going to hit a boot. But I did. for a short period of time to make sure that they were okay long term. They had no frostbite. They had nothing that they could physically see. I kept them home a week from school. This morning, the two little boys who had been trapped for seven hours in snow are telling us about their ordeal. Nine-year-old Jason Rivera and 11-year-old Elijah Martinez. Do you feel good? Do you feel... So good. Yeah. Have you guys felt like this before? Is this something that you've been doing? Yeah. Are you going to do it again? No. <laughs> I used to get a lot of nightmares. I still do sometimes, but not as bad as they used to be. Now, JJ and Papito with snow don't care for it too much. No more building snow piles, snow caves, snow tunnels. They don't want nothing to do with it no more. I understand them because of what they went through, but I'm not going to push them to go out to the snow. I would like to thank Brandon and Rolla. Let me give him a big shout out because he's a really good guy and he's basically like my hero. Officer Rolla is amazing. Kids leave shovels laying around every day. I would have never thought to dig. He just, I. It was amazing that he thought that. And I am forever grateful to him. If it wasn't for him, my son wouldn't be here. I think about these kids, if I was in that situation, 
a little claustrophobic, you put yourself buried alive for hours, freezing, dark, cold, underneath 15 feet of snow. I don't know if I would have been so optimistic. Uh, so, uh, you know, if anybody's gonna be a hero, I, I would say it's Papito and JJ. For me to be able to kiss them, say I love you, watch these two boys grow up, it's because of him. It meant a lot for me and Newberg cops. They're not well liked in Newberg, but when they came together and they rallied, every single cop was out there in the freezing cold looking for our son. The people should know that we do have an amazing police department in Newburgh, that when it really matters, they came through. It was good police work, and it was good teamwork. We all worked together for a common goal, and we were able to save these two young lives. I didn't trust my dog, and I even have that tattooed on my arm. Trust your dog. But I was able to change our training technique and have more successful finds with them and just keep moving forward. I don't blame the snowplow driver. He didn't see us. He was just doing his job. It is absolutely no one's fault. It's just one of those things where kids are being kids. You know, by the grace of God, we were able to get them out. where you give thanks for what you have. You give thanks for your family, your friends. And on that day, our entire family was very thankful to have these two boys alive. It could have been totally worse. We could have, you know, been burying our kids for Thanksgiving instead of you know, having them in the hospital or having them come home. Greatest day of my life, like the day he was born. And my nephew, I love them both. Real lucky for being in the snow for that long, just them two and soaking wet from the clothes. The boys got angels on their shoulders. God was with him.